Alambra State Signage and Advertisement Agency targets to close loopholes in their revenue generation. Anambra State Police Command arrests law graduate who allegedly murdered his younger brother. Senate President says Ninth Assembly is committed to grant adequate support to Nigeria Police Force. Afghanistan registers 10th polio case in the year. Good morning and welcome to the news at 7. I am David Obokwasile. We apologize for starting quite behind shadow. The Anambra State Signage and Advertisement Agency, ANSA, has organized for a one-day uh, workshop for her staff to increase maximum productivity and close loopholes with revenue generation drives. Correspondent Kenneth Kuchwode, who was there, brings more details. Bearing in mind that the world is becoming dynamic by the day and government can achieve much without strong revenue base, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of ANSA, Chief Jude Emencheta, harped on the need to build staff capacity on generating revenues for the government to execute capital projects. Chief Emencheta pointed out that government's drive to build strong institutions and ensure good welfare for workers were also reasons for the workshop. You know that knowledge drives the economy. If you don't have knowledge, there won't be any innovation. So what we have tried to do is to bring a crop of professionals in different fields that will help us build a very strong workforce. In his opening remark, the Commissioner for Information and Public Enlightenment, Mr. C. Don Adinuba, represented by Mr. Chuka Nabife, retreated the achievement of Anambra State and its industrial people through small-scale and medium enterprises and said a constant interface between the people and the agency will help grow their businesses more. So Anambra is the spirit of business. That is the most important thing. Because in our business. But the number of kind of business is a key into the nuances and the temperament of business and support small and medium enterprises, you are not going to win in an number. In his lecture, the chairman of Anambra State Internal Revenue Service, Dr. David Nzeku, noted that it was important for all government agencies to work harmoniously and ensure that all revenue due to government accrue to it. Data is a problem here. And um, I think trying to understand the challenges of data we have been some aspects, especially in the manner that we have come about doing our businesses in the past. The staff of the agents were also allowed to enroll into the Anambra State Health Insurance Scheme after the Executive Secretary of the agency, Dr. Simeon Onyemechi, delivered his lecture on the importance of health to productivity, which the state government has made affordable to Indianambra at minimal cost. In Oka, it's been Kenechuku Chokode for EBS News. The National Chairman of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, Abga Dr. Victor Ye, has reiterated his determination to take the party to greater heights in future elections in Nigeria. Dr. Ye made this assertion while playing host to members of the Willy Obiano Support Group in his country home at Amobia. He, has stressed, he stressed the need for loyalty and patriotism among party faithful, pointing out that the survival and growth of the party of APGAS, a united and formidable political party, is more important than the parochial interest of individual members of the party. The national chairman who maintained that APGA is the only people-oriented political party in Nigeria charged members to sustain the momentum of its success stories by engaging in unrelenting grassroots mobilization. He eulogized the Willie Obiano support group for what he described as its steadfastness and consistency in mobilizing the masses to support the incumbent Anambra State Governor and the All Progressives Grand Alliance. Anambra State Police Command has arrested a 28-year-old youth corps member and law graduate of Namda Azikiwa University who, was allegedly, who allegedly murdered his younger brother in Oka. The suspect, Victor Halle, was arrested by the police detectives attached to B Division Oka. The suspect just left training at NYC camp in Imo State before committing the crime. 
According to a statement by the police public relations officer, Mr. Haruna Muhammad, the victim, Kelechi Ohale, aged 19, who hails from Emekuku Oweri, North Local Government Area, was stabbed on the head and confirmed dead at Chukwe Meko Dumebo Juku University Teaching Hospital. The statement says his remains have since been deposited at the hospital morgue for autopsy. The police says the matter is already under investigation while they have deposited the five knives used in committing the crime as exhibits. Meanwhile, the Anambra State Police Command will commence the screening of shortlisted applicants for recruitment into the Nigerian Police Force beginning on Monday, 1st July 2019 at about 7.30 a.m. at the State Command Headquarters, Oka. The Commissioner for Police in the state, Mr. Mustafa Dandaura, in a statement signed by the Police Public Relations Officer, Mr. Haruna Mohamed, says this size will start with screening of the applicant's physical attributes and credentials. It said already invitations have been sent to the applicants who are expected to report at the screening venues on days indicated in their invitations. Applicants are required to appear in their white t-shirts and white short knickers. They are also warned to conduct themselves properly and that anybody that has nothing to do with their size should not be found within the vicinity of the screening. The statement further explained that the list of shortlisted applicants will also be pasted today at the state command headquarters and local government secretaries to enable those who didn't get notifications to check their names. The essence of giving thanks to God for his abundant blessings to mankind came to the fore when the Anglican Bishop of Aguatadas, his right reverend Samuel Ezofo, celebrated 25 years of his priestly ordination, the event which took place at the Cathedral Church of St. John in Pulobia, in Aguata local government area also featured a Holy Eucharist. Correspondent Kenneth Kuchkode, who covered the event for the ABS, completes the story. A sermon to mark the event, the Cathedral Administrator, Venerable Chijo Kinwankwo, charged leaders to always bear in mind that there exists a supreme authority they should respect. He described a leader as a builder of both human and material infrastructure. Venerable Nwankwo also cautioned the people against fighting for positions, reminding them that promotion comes from God. <laughs> In a remark, the celebrant, Right Reverend Ezofo, who described priesthood as a call to service, cautioned ministers of God against preaching the gospel of prosperity. Bishop Ezofo charged the congregation to desist from unnecessary criticisms against the ordained, reminding them of the need to always pray for priests to enable them excel in their ministry. Say that we are happy. I'm a journey of 25 years. It's not a small job. Uh, so many things have happened in these 25 years. Uh, good and bad. God has been faithful. And so that's why we said we just need to preserve this day. Just give thanks to Him for preserving our lives and seeing us through all the places we have done ministry in the gospel and bringing us to the point where we are today. So, uh, very happy, um, and you can see it in our face. I will happy, and we believe God for better things tomorrow. The president of Aguata Diocesan Women's Ministry, Mrs. Chinyere Ezofo, as well as Venerable Okechuku Emeribe and Venerable Ifani Obueli, can vast for more synergy between the government and the church to improve the moral tone of the society. The well, it is a privilege and a thing of joy for God to call somebody into his service. It is not a small thing. So it, we count it as a privilege, and I see it as a privilege, a blessing from God, and honor done to me. 
Yes, that is the way I see it. The event came to a climax when Bishop Ezofo led the clergy and workers present during the ceremony on a special Thanksgiving service. From Aguata Council area, it's been Kenechuku Chukwode for ABS News. And so to come on the news, Senate President says Ninth Assembly is committed to grant adequate support to Nigeria Police Force. We'll also go to Afghanistan where we'll tell you that the country has registered an tenth polio case in the year. After the break, more stories will come your way. Stay with us. ABS, Heartbeats of the East. The President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, has said the National Assembly was committed to granting adequate funding support required by the Nigerian Police Force. Lawan stated this when the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, led the management team of the force of the force headquarters to pay him a courtesy visit in his office. He noted that the idea of separate budgetary provisions for state police command to help in addressing security, security challenges in the country. The Senate President assured Adamu of the early passage of the Police Reform Bill, Police Academy Bill, and facilitating the smooth implementation of the Police Trust Fund to create more responsibility responsive and efficient police force. Lawan disclosed that the police needs to be restructured, including the separate appropriations being canvassed for the state police command by the Inspector General of Police. He added that adequate funding and performance of the police would boost the nation's security and that the passage of their pending bills will be fast-tracked. Earlier, the IG requested the support of the Senate for better funding of the police, including separate budgetary provisions for the state police commands, so as to improve on the security situation in the country. Adamu also asked for the quick passage of the police reform bill and the police academy bill, which is stress would enhance the performance of the force. The chief executive officer of the Bank of Industry, Mr. Olukayo de Piton, has said there exists a financing gap of about 1 trillion naira in the country every year. Peter, while speaking at an economic and business conference organized in Lagos recently, noted that the BOI had invested over 20 billion naira in the creative industry. The conference was themed on locking the real sector growth to drive sustainable economic development. According to Peter, BOI is the biggest financier of the creative industry. While calling on other banks to partner key players in various sectors of the economy, Peter disclosed that most companies were thronging to the BOI to borrow money because commercial banks were making it hard for businesses to thrive due to their over 20% interest rates on loans. The country manager, International Finance Corporation Nigeria, Emel Lore, said the banking sector was not playing its expected role in the affairs of the economy. Afghanistan, one of the last countries in the world where polio is still endemic, has registered its tenth case this year, with most, with most coming in southern regions where Taliban militants have wide control. A senior health official said yesterday that a 21-month-old girl in the south-central province of Oruzgan had been left partly paralyzed by the disease after her parents refused permission for her to receive vaccination. She was the third case registered so far this year, compared with 21 for the whole of 2018. Afghanistan, Pakistan and Nigeria are the last three countries in the world where polio is endemic, with efforts to eradicate the disease in Afghanistan complicated by the violence across much of the country and by the refusal of some communities to accept vaccination programs. Head Ayatullah Stanakanzi, the Health Ministry's point person on polio, said that out of some 9 million children eligible for vaccination, around 860,000 had not been administered polio drops in 2018, mainly due to security threats. A Taliban ban on the Red Cross, ICRC and World Health Organization operating in areas under their control had made the work of prevention more difficult and there was a risk 
and there was risk that the disease could break out in other areas. And now to sports, it's good news for the Super Eagles of Nigeria who have conquered Guinea to end their eight-year stalemate with the West African team in the ongoing 2019 Toto AFCON finals holding in Egypt. Kenneth Omero's 73rd minute goal gave the Eagles their long-desired win over their West African brothers. By the win, Nigeria becomes the first country to qualify for the round of 16 knockout stage after defeating Burundi 1-0 in their first uh, encounter, first encounter and securing maximum points in the two matches. Any outcome in the final tie against Madagascar will not affect their move to the knockout stage. Omero headed from the right side of the six yard box to the top left corner with an assist from Moses Simon, who crossed following a corner. Remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from many parts of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube at youtube.com slash ABS Radio TV online. Follow us on Twitter at ABS Radio TV and on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. Before we go, here are the main points again. An Ambra State signage and advertisement agency is targeting to close loopholes in their revenue generation. An Ambra State Police Command has arrested a law graduate who allegedly murdered his younger brother. Senate President has said the Ninth Assembly is committed to grant adequate support to Nigeria Police Force. While we told you from Afghanistan that they have registered the third polio case in the year 2019. And that is the news at this time. Good morning, Anambra continues right after now. <music>